Hello, my name is Alex Salter. Today I'm going to be doing a, this is going to be a long tutorial, we're going to aim to create this axe, this uh, one handed axe, uh, from Diablo 3. But the, cha the difference is, we're not going to be using a, a normal 3D modeling package, we're going to use one of the advanced user ones, which is ZBrush. We're going to be using ZBrush 4.2R, I think, and I'm going to be following a lot of notes, a lot of my own notes while we do this. Each uh, video part will be about 30 minutes long, and um, I expect to take between 3 and 5 parts but fully worth it. You can follow along. Um, some of the stuff I say won't be that clear, but as long as you can see what I'm clicking on, you're not going to have much problem when trying to do this or replicate this. I'm going to take you through. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to be taking you through all the process um, of all the workflows and everything you need to do to be introduced to uh, ZBrush. Uh, so if you just op we open up ZBrush, and this is there the main interface we're, f we're first faced with to start off with. Um, I'm going to be going through a f going to go through through a few different uh, ways of creating meshes in ZBrush uh, topics, including manipulating uh, simple primitives, which are obviously like cube sphere, so on, shadow boxing, hard surface sculpting, clipping of brushes, uh, masking, alphas, remeshing, dynamesh, poly painting, rendering, polygroups, and retypology. Now, um, I uh, I'm probably going to zoom through a lot of that, and just to knock out the product as quick as possible. But I'll try and uh, include as much quality and as much stuff as I can within the parts. I don't want to really go above five parts, but that depends on how much um, explaining I end up doing as well. But first of all, when you're at the screen, ignore it all. There's nothing important. You ignore all this for the start. And the first thing you'll want to do is, since, since we are aiming to build from a primitive, because our aim is to uh, is to build it in three different stages or two, um, you want to build the blade, then the shaft, and then maybe some uh, the top more of the forward um, attacking spike or whatever, or whatever, like the the decoration part. So. You can see it's it's roughly you're going to find it easier to model this part here from a cube than to say for example a sphere. So that's um, a good way of trying to break down what we need to do. So first of all, we're going to uh, go build primitive um, cube from the tools uh, menu. We're going to click it, and we should be able to drag it out as well. That's good, but I think we need to be in in a, in a edit mode. Maybe do we? Yeah, we do. I'll go through this with you as soon as I've done it, just so that we can. Then... Okay, that's good. So uh, we'll be covering transform tool symmetry, masking, like I've said, m uh, move damn standard, uh, trim dynamic brushes, and trim adaptive brushes, unify skin and uh, surface noise as well, surface noise being an extremely helpful one. I'm running, I'm recording at uh, many frames per second so maybe a bit dodgy. Anyway I've just drawn a cube and it's, it's named obviously a tool. We save it using uh, from there. I think we go to there and then go to save tool, save, save as a tool so you can keep reopening it and editing it as you go. Basic movement tools will be left mouse button for dragging moving around, alt, left mouse button to move it from side to side and so on. Uh, shift and then left click will snap to the axis which you want it to. If you just hold the, let go and then move it around and snap, it should keep snapping as you need it, as you want it to. Uh, that's about it. Masking is obviously a hold con um, control and you can mask. Ignore that. I've just overdone what I wanted to do. Uh, but we're using that later on. So you can, you should really play around with this. A lot of people um, uh, 
are what's, it, what's the word intimidated by Z brush to start with. I have been, but now uh, if you break it down, you will be a uh, be able to handle it. So first of all, we've got our cube now. Then uh, what we want to do then is a uh, start building the blade of the axe. Um, to do this, we need to cr we need to have the cube selected in the middle and then what we want to do obviously click the edit button uh, to make the object live like I've just done since I'm going to go through now and explain to you what I've done to speed things up and then we want to click uh, to make make poly mesh 3D to make the object uh, an editable poly mesh surface and I'll show you what I mean by that go up here and make polymesh 3D click it and now it's even though it's still an editable mode it's now you can now sculpt with it so if I move it right click just to turn down these these uh, axes you see how you can now start sculpting I already have a feeling even though this tutorial is going to be long it's going to be very informative for everyone there is a way of zooming in as well and I can't remember what you what the what the um uh zoom in button was I can't remember oh, there we go control and right click to zoom in and out there's a multitude of hotkeys to use I want to get rid of this bar as well I'm not dis I'm really disliking this hide there you go From there now we can work nicely after this tutorial I'll show you my uh, my advanced organic uh, sculpting that I'm doing for for stuff as well so if, so if you bring open this up a bit and then we can start to sculpt you can see it's really starting to affect the the cube everywhere it's got a low sub <coughs> and the cube's got low subdivisions in the first place so you can't do much but as you can see it's vital that if you're taking on a, a tutorial like this which uh, I have to say is more advanced than I would have liked uh, as the first one for me to do, but I've done the, I've worked with stuff before, so it's okay. But it's important to break it down and really focus on every single tiny step of the tutorial, like I'm doing. Some people might just make a cube and get keep going, but I wouldn't advise that. You want to play around, try to understand it, and feel the interface which you're working in, like I'm doing at the moment. Messing around just with left click and sculpting and suddenly you get you can start to get this different shape just from messing around control uh not to called sit yeah control z to uh bring that back out i say I want to turn this draw size back down now what we want to do next is uh start working on shaping it and also uh, fixing the geometry of it in the first place. We want to change the, the the material because it's we want to use a custom material as I prefer some of the others in the Pixelogix library. To do that go on to uh, the matte caps <coughs> and go to a nice one which you can see a good shade of depth on which for me it is uh it's raining outside i like i like the clay one i can't remember which one it was but yeah okay we'll go for this so it's just a nice wet clay kind of wet clay kind of thing so now we need to turn polyframe on so that we can see the actual geometry of the cube well the, t the typology of the cube um polyframe is useful for checking your mesh and also for viewing polygroups which will We'll look at later. You'll notice um, that when we do this, it will have tri triangular poles in the center. Which, if you know how sculpting, you know how digital sculpting works, it's not going to be good because it'll affect how how uh, the typology uh, relates when you sculpt along it. It doesn't end up to be that desirable, so we'll have to get rid of them. But first of all, anyway. Go to polyframe on, and as you can see, how do you zoom in again? 
Yeah. I don't you I'm not fully fluent with this software, but I feel confident enough to show you how to do this kind of project. <coughs> so there you go. Shows us what we need to see at the moment. Um and this is just default how it creates it. How do you pause this? Because I've got a, my phone's flashing and I need to sort that out. It's not that. It's highly annoying. Right, so I have to keep pausing because I keep burping because I don't know why I keep drinking Lucasade. But anyway, we can start speeding up now because I've just found a good workflow to get into. Okay, so the next part is we want to start shaping this cube. So to do that, we need to go to deformations and then under, if I remember rightly, size. This is, if you drag the scroller here, you see we can change the shape of the cube. Bring it back to the middle. Turn off, obviously, in all axes, but you don't want to do that, so get rid of. What happened? What's happened there? That hasn't happened before. Well, I just clicked something by accident, I can't remember. I think so. Something. Ah, oh, I must have. Yeah, so get rid of these. You want to deselect the X and the Y axis. And then, when you grab the uh, slider, it, it does the wrong one because I clicked the wrong one. As you can see, it's only scaling it in the Z axis. So now we want to crush this, well, up to uh, all the way to give us something more thin. I don't like that, I want to do it more. All the way again, so we have a nice. Start, start to have a nice shape and then just do it a bit more as well because our blade is going to be pretty thin but as you can see this is by scaling the mesh we've, squ we've squashed up all the edge loops in the middle which will give us undesirable geometry so to create a workable mesh that has a better poly uh, distrib distribution um, we need to do this next step we need to scroll down to the what was it, to the unified skin menu and turn resolution and smooth all the way down. By doing this, this will give us better. Uh, what's it called? Better. The geometry will wrap itself around the mesh and give a nice quadded new mesh, which is easy to work with, as you'll see. So we'll turn these smooths and resolutions all the way down. Make skin unified and then you can see it's how do I zoom in it's all relative I'm, my notes are not as great as they could be so if this doesn't make sense if this doesn't make sense then we all know why um, I have a feeling that will do that looks looks okay So yeah, that's the next stage of what we need to do to work on it. The next stage is... Right, so the next thing you want to do, I just had a bit of a computer problem there so I have to keep uh, pausing, is when you have reached this stage, and it all looks ridiculous and there's all this geometry going on which is not very nice, what you need to remember is you're only looking for the shape at the moment. When you have the right whips and everything that you want, ignore all the lines, that because I know it's ridiculous, uh, with how it looks, but resize it so it fills about this much of the screen. And you, you scroll down to scroll down to unified skin, turn these both down, yeah, and obviously, and click make um, unified skin. When you've done that, it will create this new one, this new skin here next to yours. You click it, and then it's been unified and looks as it should. Quads everywhere, and it looks really nice to work with. So I'll bring that to the start there. Okay, now we've done that, we then go to geometry, and then you go to. Supposedly, supposedly you go to. Ah, oh, where is it? Reconstruct subdivisions. See? Now it's reconstructed them to just uh, more equal at the biggest, like, quality good rate that it should be. And that is something really nice to work with.
Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is um, reshape this, start shaping this, I mean, to represent the axe blade that we're working from, which will be this one here. So you can roughly see, first of all, um, it's going to be obviously a two sided blade. We're going to firstly, if you imagine it's a cube like this, we're going to push down this part and push down this part. I'm not fully after something which looks exactly the same because while doing this tutorial and everything everything at the same time uh, I probably won't be able to achieve that I'm just going to be after an axe blade personally if and it's because it's a learning tutorial per, uh, to do it all in ZBrush at once if I was doing it uh, my way I would make the whole thing in Maya and just bring it in you could do that in like 20 minutes easily so uh, but because it's ZBrush and we, all, we have to learn this way so we're going to do it this way. Anyway, we're going to use the move brush with symmetry turned on to move the verts, uh, all these points, into the rough outline of an axe blade. So we need to uh, we need to hit B to bring up the brush palette and M to filter the brushes beginning with M and then obviously and then V to select the move brush. So we'll see if that works. B uh, and then you want to hit. M to filter everything with uh, which you want the one we're looking for. Begin with M and then V to select the move brush, which will be as you can see, hotkeys are very important part of that brush. They speed up everything. Move brush, so we hit move, and obviously we'll control Z that. You can see we can start to affect it, and then what we'll do next is we could well, you could just press the move brush, but we're not going to do that. Turn on symmetry by pressing the X key. So now you can see it's affecting it in certain axes. As you can see. Now we only want to affect it in the I have a feeling. Uh we want to only affect it in the Y. I have to just go find that. So in the, we have to go to the transformations menu, this one. If you hold this and drag it and bring it down wherever you want, say so there, where'd it go? Oh, okay, above. That's not what I wanted, but okay. <laughs> um, uh, we need to. What we need to do, looking at it in the front view, start pull down the mesh into a bow shape to give it a sharp edge. Um, rotate the camera. Uh, into three quarter view and then pull out the center points until you have a nice sharp edge. The Z, the Z symmetry uh, will keep your movements constrained to one axis of movement so you can't pull them in the wrong direction. So I have a feeling we want to be X and the Z. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, I get it now. The X and the Z axis have to be turned on. The moves turned on and the symmetry turned on. I'm, I've just written this all down and broken it out for you, so I'm just wanting to make sure I include everything. Okay, and then we slowly start to pull, and you can check it, checking it in each way. Start to pull each. I know there's a way of snapping to uh, to everything to make sure it it does as it's told properly, but we'll just keep don't want to rush it, I, mean, want to, I want to keep the geometry straight at the moment we've only got 10 minutes left of this part we'll carry on Sl just slow oh crap just, just slowly does it I uh, have a feeling if you turn up the draw size this is going to affect it differently maybe, maybe not uh, the intensity may help, is that going to help? yeah that does I think it all does. Is it pulling it in? The, okay, so because we haven't got the Y, um, one of the axes is turned on, we can hold, hold it. What we're doing, which is good. I don't have a line through the middle, so I've actually, I think I've, I'm going to be in a bit of a trouble. When it comes to actually pulling out the blade part of this, when I don't have anything to pull from, 
Oh no, it's fine because I can just up. Oh, I can just increase geometry. I think. Anyway, start to shape. Okay, I best do that now. Really. So we need to go to geometry. Divide it, and see what happens. Of course, it's going to be edge loop. Is that edge loop? This function requires the mesh to be particularly hidden, uh, partially hidden. Okay, hide a portion of the current mesh. Hide a portion of it. Can, does that mean mask it? Can we mask a part of it? Oh crap! No, I didn't want to do that. I want a mask. No. Um, divide. 3D mesh with subdivision history may be fully subdivided only while the high subdivision level is active. Switch to the high subdivision level or... Oh, for God's sake. Really? Divide. I'm going to keep just pressing it until it does something. <laughs> Edge loop. S no. How annoying. Crease. Was that oh, I see. That's done... That's done something. Increase tolerance. Increase again. That's going to do anything. Increase. No. Not correct. That's not really going to be a but. Well, I don't know why it's done this to me. This is. This is odd. Increase. Seriously, that's not. That's not what I wanted. Uh, okay. Higher res. Then we go to divide. No, that's not helped either. That's interesting. Right, we're going to uh, ca carry on. I think I know. I think we can we can do something. Pull this up and bring it in. And then same for the other side. As soon as I uh, have rotated this to a more, that's better. I'm start I do like the brush. I do. So, and then obviously we carry on. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah. And we want one side to be thicker than the other. This is like a sharp edge. This will be the blunt edge, or something like that something supposedly and then obviously drag these back out I have a feeling we can make this work yeah that's that's quite nice now I'm working on a fixed axis no view axis that's why it's working so well at the moment so you have to always remember to do that and snap to axis It's vital. Yeah, we're we're getting somewhere nice now. It's starting to really make a. How many minutes are we in? We've got five more. Right. That's that's okay for the moment. That's that's all right. It it could be. It could be better, but for the moment that will that will do. Uh, right, because uh, I can't really work out how to put extra geometry down here, which is highly annoying. This will probably do. It can just be a really could even make it stone axe, couldn't we? Instead of a metal one, because you'd imagine this made out of stone. You don't need a sharp edge, so that's something we could go with. Or flint. No, flint's more sharp. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is we just want to move the use the move tool in this axis. So can we click that again to get rid of this? No. <laughs> um, and then we want to drag it out, holding shift. This is to scale it. Uh. 
I'm going to click on this one and then I think it oh crap and then it's used con slowly just do something onto it into it why isn't it working seriously oh no because it's a red bit so as you can see this changes it all remember hold shift to control the the uh, whip for bill could do with a bit more bringing in that will, that's that's pretty good I think if you go back to draw and we can just carry on with the the moving of points so yeah I can probably get a if I push them together I'm not going to get a sharp angle but what 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 are we f affecting at the moment I think we're yeah so yeah just slowly now I could do one of these tutorials after but do a uh, a speed video so do this all without any talking and then speed it up which I may do I may have to have a go at that but at the moment we just want to focus on focus on this and trying to get something out which resembles it resembles what we're trying to do here Okay, so and I, and I think we could probably uh, do the same here as well. Bring this in. So you can see how helpful um, the axis um, constraints are. They're really, really helpful. Oh no, I didn't want to do that. Okay, so now that's done, we need to go on to the next part. This is the clever bit. Which is masking one part to uh, change the, the size of another. I think I've got all the right uh, axes is, um, done. I think so. Okay. And we're going to do this by doing a uh, selecting. Okay, so I've um, turned on uh, active symmetry, turned off all the other axes, but left on Z. Now, in this view, what we are going to do is in the front view, we're going to hold down shift and then pan, uh, pan the camera into this area. Then we're going to, outside of the mask mesh, we're going to hold down control. I think it's called it's control, isn't it? I keep getting mixed up. And, uh, and and drag a box over half of the axe. It's going to be this side because I want to pull it forward. Um, you know, I've, and I want to shape it more. So, so c control, drag over half the axe. I'm presume roughly about about there. No, that no, that's that's too much. Roughly about about there. Then. Again, hold down control and click on the uh, the mesh to blur the mask. This is a clever point. So hold control and left click will blur it more, so you, so it's a more even transition. And then we want to select the scale transform tool or button and click on the uh, the center of the unmasked blade, and then drag uh, an, a line of action from there on. So from here. And as you can see, so we can just redo that. I did that wrong. It's not going to let me redo it though. Ah, oh, it's okay. Control, left click that, and drag out. So it's you can as you can see, it's uh, how do I zoom out? It's affecting it um, unisonly. It's affecting it evenly, averagely. Then we can grab this. No, we can click here grab this side and drag that out and then I think it's you hold was it shift oh god I can't remember um control I'm sure it is no that's incorrect must be shift and now
go back to draw mode and then there you, there you go we, there's another thing we can do as well I think it's to do with um, I think it's to do with something no it's, it's to back in draw mode and then it's increase the my, my brush size yeah I think that's right increase it greatly and just start pulling it out really give it some kind of shape like so oh yeah yeah because we want to pull it yeah you're just really shaping it however you want at the moment like this really giving it some axe kind of feel this is a stone axe anything like that yeah, I love the, I love the look of it it's working well I need to get click off out of this mask area oh yeah and to, I think it's yeah to switch to switch masks you just control left click out in the outer space bit to get out of it though is a different is a different matter can't remember can't remember how uh, but never, never mind uh, and that'll be it for part one we've roughly we've roughly um, shaped it all in and the next part we're going to do is I think it's add more detail add more typology so that we can then start to subdivide which we'll come to later on in the next video thank you for watching